So in video number two, we're gonna talk about hacking HTML without knowing code. And what I mean by that is being able to set up landing pages and basic web pages and understanding how to do it without knowing code is the first way to get your feet wet and get yourself confident. So let's get started. So what I want you to go ahead and do is go ahead and open up Composer and pause this video if you need to and we'll get started. So what I mean by hacking HTML, as I said earlier, is we are using a tool that will allow us to see what the user sees via the browser without actually having to add our own code. Now, this is the normal view. So at the very bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna see the normal tab, as you can see here. And then you're going to see the source tab. So the source tag is going to reveal the actual HTML code to us. And as I stated in the previous video, I basically went over the basic structure. You can see there is an HTML tag here. There is a heading tag and the heading tag gets closed here. And then the body starts here and so forth. Now I will talk more about open and close tags and the concept of that in the next video. So don't worry about that right now. Let's just focus on utilizing the tool so that you can use it and get confident, get your feet wet right now. So the nice thing about Composer is it looks kind of like Microsoft Word, but a simplified version of it in a way. So what you see is what you get. So what you see in the normal tab is what you get. So let's say for example, that we are going to say dog training. And then we highlight that. We can center align that, as you can see here. We can left align, right align, and so forth. You can bold it. You can make it bigger by clicking on here. You can also make it smaller. So what you see here is what the user is going to see. And that is what the, what you see is what you get HTML editor. Now you can also change the color, let's say to red, and we can also change the background to, let's say something like yellow. So this would be a highlighted color. If we wanted the full whole line to turn, let's say yellow, we could do that as well. You can also go further and you can add things like tables. So let's go back here and remove the highlight and we can add a table. So what I like about Composer is it gives you the ability to specify, okay, I want this many columns and I want this many rows. So in this case, I'm just gonna do four and you can specify the cell spacing, which is in between each cell, how much spaces do you want? So this is a table here. We can always tweak it if we would like to. So if we right click here, for example, and we go to table cell properties and we go to table, we can add more rows. So if we are not satisfied that it only has two, we can always add 10. And if we're not satisfied by two columns, we could add something like five. And we could also remove the border. So you can actually see the border here, but we can actually remove it so that the users do not see the border and it becomes like this. So if we do that, then the user can't see the actual border and they don't realize that there's a table there and you can start adding text. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. And in addition to that, you can also add images, you can add forms, you can also add links to other websites and you can make sure that they open in new windows. So if somebody clicks on your link and you want them to stay on your web page, but you want to bring them to another page. So it opens in a new window. You can say something like HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com as an example. And you can say link is to be open in a new window. So when you do that, when somebody clicks this link, it's going to open in a brand new window. And that way they don't forget about your own window. And, I'm going to actually show you the code to do this because once you have memorized this code, it's going to make your life a lot easier 
you're not going to have to fully rely on Composer, which you can, but it's just going to slow you down. Now, if we take a look in the source, we can see that it has changed from the basic HTML header, body, and so forth. So now we have a huge empty table here, which is the table. And that, that's what's so easy about HTML is you can specify, you can read this, you can say, okay, the, here's a table, you know, here is the actual link right here. And it'll make more sense. Don't worry about it. Don't let this code freak you out or anything like that. So I just wanted to show you that it changed and it changed slightly. Now you can also add things like images. So if we click on image here, we can specify the location of the image. Now, one thing to be aware of with composer is when you specify the location of the image, generally speaking, if you, let's say, we'll we'll pick one image here. By default, let's say, for example, that we are gonna choose this image here. Now, as you can see, this image location is actually pointing straight to my computer, which is not really what we want. What we want it to do is we want it to point to the actual website. Now, in general, I'd say the best thing and the easiest way to do it is simply linking directly to the image itself. So the image file name I would put here and I would remove everything else before that. So that way the image actually shows up. Now you can't see the image because right now it is pointing to the website. But if you know how to add a image via the actual HTML code and you know the HTML code itself, then you won't have to face this problem. You will know how to fix this issue, which is why I say we are going to focus on these basic tags and then you will learn exactly how to make these tags and they are standard. They do not change. And because that is the case, my hope is by the end of this video course, when you run into these issues, you will no longer have these issues again because you will have the right weapon, which is the code in hand in your brain. So that's how to add an image. And we'll talk more about the other codes in the next video.